So as a kid, I used to hate theme parks. And the main reason I hated them, in a short story time, is because my mom would take me. I was really young, but I was also very tall, so I was able to ride the rides regardless of my age because of my height. And I went on a lot of rides that were very scary because my mom was very young at the time and she really, really enjoyed roller coasters. And so I was traumatized dramatically for a very long period of time, up until the point where I got to high school and all my friends wanted to go on roller coasters. I decided to go on one and instantly started loving them once again. However, with the game Unfair by Good Games Publishing and Simon, uh, making me wonder about uh, theme parks once again, because this game is in its title Unfair, if you want it to be. It's a game in which you're building a theme park and everybody else around you is doing so as well and the city is helping you up until the point where your theme parks start getting too big and too crowded and it's not good for the populace so the city comes and starts messing with you to try and hurt your fare which can make it kind of unfair and that's kind of the title of the game right so you're carefully constructing your roller coasters, your themes, all the different rides, and your wonderful leisure activities, whether you're going to the bathroom uh, or, or something like that, and you're building. There's three actions on your turn. You're gonna get a specific type of uh, deck, whether it be the vampire theme parks, the ninja, the pirate, the gangster, the jungle, or the robot, and basically you're going to be constructing your park as best as you can throughout the rounds of the game. The first half of the game is fair, and the other half of the game is less fair. There's also events that you can mess with other players, depending on the cards that you pick up, or you can choose to help yourself with those cards, giving you a little bit of dual action. And all together, your objective is to make a profit. If you turn the most profit after the game is over, you're going to win the game. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what you get in the game Unfair, and then we'll tell you what I think about it. The main reason for this is because there's an expansion out, or coming out, and I want you guys to decide if you want to pick this game up along with that expansion, which will give you even more content. It's a good time to do it. Additionally, they wanted me to play the game five times before re reviewing it, and I played it four times and then I waited for a long time before I played the fifth time, which happened yesterday, and then I'm like, okay, all right, I've done it, now we're gonna do a review, so let's go down below. So here we have the game Unfair, and it's set up for two players, and this is set up right now, but you can take this board and flip it upside down if you wanna play with players on either side, or if you're playing next to each other, you'll use this, showing all the cards facing this way, so it kind of has a mix and match thing. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about all the components in the game. And the first thing to talk about is the park cards. These are cards you're going to be purchasing from this deck here. Players are going to get some to start with. There are these blueprint cards, which are basically objectives to score at the end of the game, similar to games like Ticket to Ride. You'll have certain things you'll try and score. However, you may fail to score them and, in fact, lose points. These are the city cards, and the first four are going to be nice. There's a public notice, which means you can't buy blueprints anymore. And then the last four are going to be mean. This is the uh, event card deck here which is going to basically pop things up and different things are going to happen and this usually is going to be uh not things that you can utilize to either hurt players or help yourself this little roller coaster was basically going to take you through the steps of the game there's a set of money mesmer tokens there is the first player marker and then there are these replacements for this little piece here as well as a replacement for the first player marker these are the decks for the game as well right now we're playing with a pirate and vampire deck and on each of these cards here will tell you basically what comes in the deck whether the attraction sizes are going to be large whether they're going to have good blueprints, how many coins you're likely to get, and the unfairness of it all. Some of these are quite unfair, like the vampire deck, and others are not so unfair, like the pirate deck, meaning there's going to be less meanness in the game. So you can kind of mix and match it how you'd like to choose to play. Additionally, there are game changer cards, which are these guys here, which uh, if you choose to use one of these guys, it will have a unique rule to the game, changing it a bit. Like, for instance, you can't use event cards or park card abilities to affect other players. So it makes things a little nicer. The card is called World Peace. So if you don't like mean games, you can change it up by playing this game changer. These other decks are also available, and you're basically going to choose one for each player, and then you're going to take each part of the deck and separate them into these areas here. For example, this robot would go here if there was three players. The player who chose robot would get the main debt, main gate card. There's the financial services, which are loans that you can take out. There's these two cards here, which are called showcases, that you can choose to build as opposed to building a normal card, and they provide some useful benefit. There are the park cards, there are the blueprint cards, the city cards, and the event cards. And for the most part, 
part, you're just going to shuffle them up and place them into their respective decks. That being said, however, the city deck is different. You're going to take a certain number of blue cards uh, and place them on top, so that this public notice in the middle, and a number of red cards and place them on bottle, bottom, and make sure you shuffle those up as well, but separating them from good and bad cards. Every player is going to get their main gate, their service, and their round summary, along with both showcases, even though you can only play one in the game. They're going to get five random cards from this park deck, and they're also going to get 20 currency, and these are the currency here, here over here. I would recommend using three fives, and I would recommend using five ones here. Come on, puppy, sit down. It's okay. <laughs> uh, basically, after that, you're pretty much ready to begin the game. All these cards are out and available. And all you're going to do is start with this little roller coaster event here. Uh, choose a first player and place here. Okay? Draw an event card. Every player will then be able to draw one event card from the event deck. And then you're going to move on to the city event. And the city event is one of these guys here, which is the round, in which you're going to go ahead and flip it over. And it'll tell you to do something specifically, like roll two dice and gain coins equal to the result. And repeat each time you roll a double. So this is a good way of getting points here. After that happens, this is basically what's going to facilitate the round and change it in some unique way. Then you're going to move on to playing event cards, and you'll play them based on turn order. So this player would start by choosing to play any number of event cards and choosing to play the top or bottom section. Generally speaking, the top section is good and the bottom section is not so good for other players. You can choose also not to play them if you do not want to. After every player has chosen to play or not play those cards, you'll move on to the park section of the game. In general, there's going to be three rounds of this, or three turns of this and then a possible fourth round or fourth turn if there are cards that say otherwise usually it'll probably be a city event of some sort on the first turn or first park phase of the game you're basically going to be able to take an action such as put a card from the market into your hand uh, you could also go ahead and draw two park cards or two event cards and choose one so you could take two of these and pick one or take two of these and pick one uh, you could also discard a card from your hand, which are one of these five park cards you start with, and then you'll be able to uh, draw up to five park cards and keep one. There's also building that can happen. You can go ahead and build a card from your hand and place it down in your tableau, or from the market over here and place it into your tableau. The costs of the cards are associated with the top right, the number of value or the number of guests in the top, the upper top right, and then of course the value of points might be here, or uh, what the card does. Most of the time they're going to be themes, they're going to be attractions, showcases, that kind of stuff. And additionally, remember if you have, for instance, uh, five cards that you start with, these park cards, in some cases you might actually get no attractions in your hand, and you're always going to need at least one. So in the case of not having any attractions, you'll discard those five, draw five more, and repeat the process until you have at least one attraction. This guy's got a shot slideshow, so he's good now, and he's ready to go. Uh, the other thing you can do is demolish. You can discard a card from in front of your tableau because you can only have five attractions at any point. However, you can have additional staff members and other things like showcases that can stay on your side of the board. They're basically separate event cards that will help you throughout the game and potentially hinder other players. The last thing you can do is gain one coin for each attraction. And you're going to gain up to five coins and you'll take it from the supply here. So he'll take one of those actions He'll take one of those actions or her, and then you'll move on to the next section, and you will rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, choose to do this or not based on whether it's available, and then you'll move on to the guest phase. The guest phase is pretty simple. You're going to about, worry about stars. And stars is also going to be based on your capacity. If you look at your main gate, it's going to tell you how many guests you can have, and guests are basically these stars here. Uh, the other thing is total attractions. It tells you that there's five. You could potentially have more if it says so on a city card or something like that. And then, of course, super attractions, which are these showcases here. You can only have one of those. But those will also entail in attractions. So if you have one of these, you can only have four other attractions. And here is the guest capacity right here, which says 15. So that being said, uh, basically what you're going to do is tally up the number of stars and uh, figure out how many guests you have. Uh, check for extra income from events or abilities marked with a ticket symbol, and then you're going to get one coin per guest uh, and any extra from any tickets you might have. So if I had four stars in front of me, I would score four coins, which will be able to be utilized for the next round of the game. 
After that, you're going to move on to the cleanup step, which is basically going to remove anything from your side of the field that only has a one use, or maybe there's certain event cards that might need to be discarded, as well as you're going to take all the cards here in the market, you're going to then discard them, and you're going to replace them with six new cards, which will basically facilitate the round changing, so you'll have new things that you can go ahead and purchase. Additionally, at any point in time, if you purchase any of these cards or take any of them and build them, you're then going to be able to replace instantly from the park deck, so there's always six available for anybody on any turn. After you've done all that, then you're going to advance the starting player marker to the next player. You're going to move this over here, and you're going to start by drawing an event card from the event deck and move along through the process up until the point where this deck runs out. So as you can see, a blue objective, a blue objective, a blue one. Then the public notice is going to happen, which will be on the fourth round, which says that you can no longer pick up blueprint cards by using the blueprint action. And then starts the unfair cards, the uh, more dastardly ones. And these are going to come out. Remember, they're random, so they, there's usually each deck will have a certain number of them, and these are also shuffled randomly as well. Finally, when this deck runs out, this is the last one that's going to have this last round here, you're going to do as best as you can to get your rides and whatnot uh, finished up, and then you're going to score, and that will end the game. Now, just to show you exactly uh, what some of these actions do, I'll go ahead and go into that really quick here. So I've got these cards in my hand, and you have to play an attraction before you play an upgrade or anything like that. So for instance, if I wanted to build a pizzeria, it was the first park phase, I could place this down. I'd spend four coins, because that's the cost of this thing here, and then it's going to give me one star. After he would do his action, you move on to the next phase, and let's say that I wanted to go ahead and upgrade the quality of this attraction. I could choose to spend 15 if I wanted to take this quality upgrade and place it underneath this, which is basically gonna give you more stars and make it more valuable because you wanna make the largest attractions that you possibly can. Remember to fill in your market as well. This is gonna give you more points. The main rule about building here on these cards is that you can't have any of the same named things on each of the attractions. So you couldn't have a locker and coat check twice on the pizzeria, but you could have one. There are certain things that say guest services, so you can have multiple guest services on here, but they have to be different names and usually they'll do different things. Some of them won't do anything. And then there's of course special rules like superior quality, which will allow you to have the exact same name on the same specific attraction, which means you can have even two or three of these, but they are very expensive to play. And as you can see, he's run out of money just because he played these two things here. And uh, the other actions, of course, is taking money from here, drawing from here, drawing from here, and choosing, etc., etc., etc. The only way you're going to be getting cards from here is also by taking those actions. These are the blueprint cards here, and usually they're going to ask you to complete a specific thing. For instance, this one says to complete all items, any super attraction with a gangster theme, any hotel with an, a quality upgrade and a gangster theme icon, and then the insane aspect is if you actually manage to get this bonus, you'll get more points. So you can get 35 and 20 points just from completing this blueprint. And they all have different requirements. And if you don't complete them, you're likely to lose points. So be aware of that when you choose to go for blueprints. As well as, of course, loans. You can gather loans and take loans out, but they're going to give you negative points at the end of the game if you're not careful. These specific things have different things. They say different things like close all your sideshows that you have, or you must spend three coins for each event you play from your hand during the event step. And then you have the nicer ones like roll two dice, and then you'll gain coins based on the value. And if you roll doubles, you can multiply that. And of course, let's look at a couple event cards here. This one here says that you can choose a card from the market and put it into your hand. So one of these guys can put it in your hand if you want to play this card. Or you can choose to do an inspection action and choose a competitor and close all ride attractions in their park. That is relatively mean, but you can do either or. So you can do the nice thing that helps yourself or a mean thing that hurts your opponent. And it's all taking place during the play event cards. And that being said, that's pretty much the idea of the game. Each of these different parks are going to involve a different type of uh, park that will give you their more unfairness or different ride attraction sizes and all that good stuff. So every time you play, it's going to be very different, including using the game changers and how the city functions. This game has got a ton of replayability, as you can see. Let's come up. I'll tell you about the quality, the theme, etc., etc., and whether or not you should pick up Unfair and maybe even the expansion that's come out. Oh, I'm so sorry for destroying all of your rides the entire round and reducing your value of currency to zero and uh, potentially hurting you for the next round. Yes, that can happen in Unfair. It's funny how this game works. You're happy and you're going and building your park and it's great. And then all of a sudden, the city decides it doesn't like what you're doing anymore and things get rough. Now, of course, players can be rough as well with the event cards choosing to do the positive action for themselves or the negative action 
action that affects their opponents. But when that happens on top of negative park city cards that come up, it can be really, really dastardly and things can happen that you don't want. But luckily, in the events deck, there are cards that will stop bad things from happening to you, provided you have them. They're basically like counter spells. Oh, I've got an inspection that's going to happen on you and you're going to have to shut down all of your restaurants. I've got to counter that inspection and now you don't have to worry about it. But sometimes you don't have that. In fact, most of the time you don't have that. Uh, so you have to be very careful with the game when you're playing it, right? Additionally to what's interesting about this game is you can choose between many different types of parks and they all have their own unfairness level, the city requirements and all that kind of stuff changes how you play. And there's six different parks, which is more than enough different parks to play with, especially with a lower player account. Adding more players, of course, can make the game even more unfair, or at least potentially more unfair, and giving uh, more things that can happen to you on your turn that you may or may not want to happen. It's funny because when you're playing the game you're having fun, you're placing your parks down, it's, everything's going well, and oh they're making their park and you're just doing the best you possibly can and uh, all of a sudden uh, things start getting real nasty because people realize, realize you're doing too well and now it's time to shut down your rides and that's where the real competition gets involved. It's great both ways. However, my main concern about this game is the fact that yes, it is going to be one of those take that style games which things are gonna happen to you that you may not want to have happen to you. But luckily as well, you don't have to play with that. And in fact, using the world peace card for those people who are a little less interested in competitive gaming, and whether you just wanna build your park and play a little bit of a sim, the roller coaster tycoon style of a game, you can do that with this game. But for those competitive players like my wife, <coughs> she will definitely wanna play with the more aggressive strategy and be able to mess with you as best as she possibly can to make sure she ensures victory. There's showcase cards too, which I su suggest you play early if you possibly can, because utilizing those cards is going to let you do uh, really well in the game. There's a specific requirement to them that says that super attractions require five stars. So in order, to have, in order to play one of these guys, you have to have five stars. But uh, when you get them out, they do specific things during specific steps that will basically increase their value and power in the game. I really like Unfair, actually. It's funny because there's this, there's like right in the middle, some people are like, ah, this game's too mean, or ah, this game's... And I'm like, maybe it's because I haven't played enough times, which is why I, I'm assuming you gotta play it multiple times in different ways to determine how you like to play the game. Being able to choose how you like to play a game is great, and the fact that there's so much replayability is also really, really fun. If I don't want to play a specific way, I don't have to. And depending on the crowd, it's going to determine whether I want to play that specific way, which is what Unfair lets you do, which is super cool. The artwork in the game is great. It removes that scariness from my childhood where I'm like, oh no, roller coasters and whatnot. Gives me a soft, relaxing park building theme. But if I don't want that and I want to, I want to uh, go back to my trauma, I can then ensue the unfairness of Unfair and start putting all the nasty things in that we can go ahead and compete against each other with. Overall, this game is so much fun. Artwork, the quality of the game is great, and I'm really looking forward to checking out the expansion, which I haven't played yet, but I hear is also fun from uh, the people who I know have played it. I'm trying to think. I think it's been released, but don't quote me on that. I'll have a link in the description for you if you would like to take a look at that. We've played the multiple different times using this little chart here, and it basically will uh, give you a really easy way of calculating a score. You want to score uh, by getting the most attractions uh, with the highest amount of qualities and whatnot, which will score you a ton of points. And at the same time, blueprints are a great way of scoring points too, provided you have the necessary attractions to get the points. Remember, there's only a certain number of different types of cards in the deck, so if those are already out in play and you buy a blueprint that's got a leisure activity but all the leisures are gone, you've just lost points. So you need to be aware. And in fact, even look at the deck before you start playing to realize how many of what is in the deck is a good way of thinking about uh, starting the game up just so you have an idea of what blueprints you may or may not want to get and how you want to play your event cards. And even still, when you play event cards on other players and you're mean, it's very likely they're going to be mean back to you. So you're going to get, get what you give. So be careful with that. <laughs> it's Anyway, I, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I think for the most part, people are going to really enjoy this game. It's very simple, very easy to pick up, and very easy to understand with a ton of great artwork. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the stuff they come up with. I've seen uh, Fluttering Souls, which is a beautiful small two-player game by Joel Lewis. And this one by Joel Finch is a really great game as well with terrific artwork and amazing theme. If you want to take a look at the game Unfair, look down below in the description and pick it up for you as long as you don't have a traumatic experience for roller coaster rides. Well, I mean, even still, 
I played it and I liked it, so you'll probably be, be okay too. Thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, check out the link below in the description and go ahead and pick it up. It is a lot of fun, provided you don't mind to take that aspect, and of course you can even avoid that if you don't want. And also go ahead and check out my friends at Before You Play and Show Me How to Win. Monique and Jackie do some great content and separate content from my own if you want to see some playthroughs of Monique's content, or if you want to see designers giving you tips and tricks on how you play the game, that is is going to help you out a lot. There's a lot of cool stuff there. And our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. If you like watching people play games lives and you want to win some free stuff utilizing our little wheel here, you can go ahead and do that as well as liking, subscribing, and commenting on this YouTube channel. We do appreciate it. And we hope you're having a great day. As always, we look forward to visiting you in an unfair next time. Say bye. Say bye. Oh, my good puppy.